The World Cup kicked off today in Qatar, and while you'll hear all manner of oles and ales over the next four weeks, this might be the event's ultimate soundtrack, Got Got Need. It's not the scalpers hawking tickets, it's the refrain of fans sifting through packs of World Cup stickers. Think soccer's answer to baseball cards. Before the 1970 World Cup, four brothers in Italy, the Paninis, began printing collectibles featuring images of players from every country in the competition. More than 50 years later, fans all over the globe scour for that obscure Serbian goalkeeper or elusive Lionel Messi, hoping to complete their albums. The Panini sticker phenomenon has become a booming international business and a central part of the World Cup experience. The story will continue in a moment. For millions of soccer fans, the World Cup unofficially began weeks ago. When the Panini stickers for this quadrennial event shot onto the market. Yes! Welcome, welcome, welcome! Oh! I'm going to Yes! I got an outdoor! In a classroom in the town of Sudbury, England. In the thrumming cities of Sao Paulo and Mexico City. Fans of all stripes embarked on a common treasure hunt. Anybody got that extra Ronaldo one? Collecting 670 stickers depicting the players and teams from this World Cup. I'm like shaking, I finally did it. All so they can complete their album. Listen, if you have gold or panini sticker today, people will go for the sticker and not the gold. Panini sticker is more valuable than gold, you're saying? Today, yes. The sports. Francesco so Fernari is the biggest official panini distributor in the United States. An Italian Venezuelan American, he is the ultimate panini sticker evangelist. 74. He's completed every sticker album since 1974, including the 2022 vintage many times over. I have already seven. You, you're, you're a man in your 50s. <laughs> you have seven albums completed. And uh, still counting. <laughs> a pack costs $1.20, and Fernari predicts sticker sales from 2022 will reach 100 million packets in the U.S. alone, nearly a billion worldwide. We're talking about a little piece of paper with some adhesive on it. What makes this so special? John, you got to understand that you have all your legends, you have all your best players at a distance of, you know, your hand. You can touch them, you can talk to them. It's fantastic. How coveted are these things? When Argentina ran out of stickers in September, its Secretary of Commerce called an emergency meeting to solve this national crisis. We live in a digital world. How are these paper stickers still this popular? This sensation, John, to get a pack, to rip it out, to smell it, to open it, and to find the place right here, there is no way you can replicate it in an electronic way. So you even have a method for how you're ripping that packet Every open. Every single pack has to be done in the same way. By the way, I've opened at least... You've done this before. Probably 2,000 packs up until now. Oh my God, Germany. This was a good one. Good that pack. was a good pull, I love it. We went to Modena, Italy, to Panini's headquarters, the equivalent of Willy Wonka's factory. As Panini's rolled off the press, 21 hours a day, 11 million packets a day, each containing five stickers. The headliners, Mbappe, Messi, Modric, and the coming stars. Players with four names, and there's Fred. The phenomenon started here, next to the cathedral, at a newspaper kiosk in the center of town. After World War II, Olga Panini, a widow, ran the newsstand with her four sons. Not unlike a soccer team, each had a special skill. The oldest son, Giuseppe, was the dreamer with the big plans. Salute! Salute. We met Giuseppe's son, Antonio, and Giuseppe's nieces, Laura and Lucia Panini, in Modena. He was uh, like a volcano. He had many, many ideas. A volcano? A volcano, yes. Giuseppe's initial idea was to sell cards depicting flowers. 
and was a disaster. <laughs> but they realized that the formula was okay, not the subject. Short of Lira, Giuseppe had, as it were, one last shot on goal. It was 1961, and he turned to a new subject, Italian soccer. It was a hit, especially with the kids. Even if production was rudimentary. All the stickers were printed and then were cut, and they were mixing with a shovel at the beginning. To make sure there were no duplicates, yes. they, mix, they mixed with a then shovel. They replaced the shovel with a churn, the one they use normally for making butter or The cheese. butter churn. Yes, yes. <laughs> and they had a handle, and they were moving this handle, and was working. Giuseppe's brother Umberto, the family engineer, invented machinery that mixed stickers to prevent dreaded duplicates in each pack. His contraptions were so successful, the designs are still in use today, 60 years later, and enabled the brothers to scale up their ambitions. Before the 1970 World Cup in Mexico, they paid $1,000 cash to soccer's governing body to buy the rights to produce stickers of the players, not least the great Pele. Suddenly, Panini became chiefly associated not with a sandwich, but with a worldwide pastime, the growth of the stickers mirroring the growth of soccer. Espanyol 82, Spain 82. Antonio Allegra, Panini's marketing director, told us how collecting the World Cup albums over the decades became a rite of passage, also a way to mark time. Wow, it's the first appearance for Diego Armando Maradona in a World Cup. This was Maradona's first World Cup. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one is Germany 2006. Uh, and uh, here we have a very, very young uh, Messi. Uh, so this, this teenager right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's 19. There are countries that have fallen off the map and hairstyles that have fallen out of fashion. He looks like the drummer. Yeah. What size is that? That's that one, mate. Today, Panini sticker photo shoots, <laughs> like this one in England, are the World Cup equivalent of school picture day. Lovely, lovely, thank you. Back in Italy, Marcello Minori is Panini's project manager overseeing image control. Sometimes these pictures are not perfect, might be too dark, maybe there's a pimple on someone's face, and we're asked to remove it. A little Photoshop. Correct. I heard one story of, of a federation once getting in touch and saying, this, this guy's really ugly. Can you do something about that? Yes. It's the truth. Should we name names? No, I'm still working with these people. <laughs> so, so what do you do when no. you get that call? Uh, we, uh, first reply is of course, no, no worry. I mean, we're gonna change the picture. Second time, third time, fourth time, the fourth time I will say, listen, this is his face. It's his face, I'm sorry. I mean, we, we did all we, could, all we could. What do players think of sticker madness? We asked Gigi Buffon who literally saved Italy during its run to the World Cup trophy in 2006. One of the greatest ever goalkeepers. Man, boy, bravo, bravo, bravo. At age 44, he's not only still playing, but let's keep this between us. He's still collecting stickers, a hobby since childhood. When you still collect, where are you getting your stickers? Ogni tanto mi piace proprio... Now and again, I like the ritual of going to the kiosk to buy, say, 10 packets of stickers. It's a little embarrassing, but now I can say to the kiosk owner, the stickers are for my kids, and he believes me. Buffon let us in on another secret. Do players swap stickers in the locker room? Yes. I think if we were really to investigate all the players in the locker room, I think 60 to 70 percent filled the album. Buffon appeared in four World Cup albums, aging before our eyes. And his. We have visual aids. Ooh. His favorite sticker was for the 2006 album, the last time Italy triumphed at the World Cup. You've had your picture taken thousands of times, but you understood this is for generations. Yes, for sure. For me, it was a solemn moment. Because there was a kind of respect that I had to show towards Gigi the child and to the dreams of Gigi the child. Del Gigi bimbo. <laughs> An hour from Buffon's practice field in Parma, we met another child at heart, Johnny Bellini. You must have thousands of stickers. Considered the most prolific Panini collector in the world. 
Crystal and Mexico 70. The debut edition, Mexico 1970, is the holy grail of World Cup sticker albums. This guy has five of them, and he ain't selling. Oh my God, jeez. Floor to ceiling. He lives in what is less a home than a sticker repository. Even in your daughter's room. You might have baseball cards in your attic. He has half a million stickers spilling out of every drawer. E solo per pochi. Bellini even has whole sheets of them hidden under a tablecloth. No one is allowed to eat on the table because it's too sacred. It's very rare. These are all rare. Lucky for Johnny, his long-suffering wife, Giovanna, has a sense of humor. Heaven forbid there were a fire tonight. You had to go back into your house. What would you rescue first? Obviously the stickers. If there's a fire, my wife would run away with her own legs. Your, your wife can fend for herself so the stickers can't. Exactly. Saturday nights are all right for sticking at the Bellini household. While Giovanna watches a movie, Johnny fills his album and never forgets a face. You remember 50 years later what the, what the last player was you needed to complete the album. I also remember the first sticker that I got in a pack, which was Sergio Carantini, a defender from Vicenza. It's like your first girlfriend. <laughs> Her, I don't remember. <laughs> He's not alone in his soccer nostalgia. Those kids who grew up in the 70s collecting stickers are now grandparents and parents, passing down the tradition, like Francesco Fernari in Florida. Think about this. There is no way you can find a product that you can have different generations doing at the same time. It's fantastic. Here's what else makes it exceptional. Mexico, Polonia. Almost everyone that completes their album does so not through purchase power. Did you want to trade for this one? Oh, yeah. Would, are you trading that USA no. one? But through old-fashioned face-to-face trading. Around the world, there are Panini sticker swapping sessions that are organized, others that are impromptu. This next month in the desert of Qatar, one country will lift the trophy, but millions will feel their personal version of World Cup glory. You've seen people complete their albums. What is that feeling like when you get that very last sticker? Let me put it this way. Whenever you play soccer and you score a goal in the final of the tournament, that's kind of the feeling you have whenever you complete an album. It's an old-timey analog hobby, no screen required. It relies on the humanity of touch. I'll take Fred. He's got Pele. OK, thanks. And the value is largely sentimental. But in these tribal, polarized times, leave it to stickers to take people and countries and bind them together. Yes, the Argentine team.